So let's take a look, an overview of the MCHF, uh, what I'm calling Pocket SDR. You could put it in a winter coat pocket. This is a version uh, 4 board, now they're up to 0.6 I believe, in a uh, Chinese box which is available online. And we'll just take a look at the front panel really quickly, give you a quick overview of everything that this radio has. All of the rotary encoders here are not uh, like volume controls with a stop. They're actually uh, digital encoders that spin all the way around. And not that it matters at all, but they also have uh, push-in detent positions. So if you want to push them in, that gives a function. I'll show you how. We start with the mode, of course, mode button, AM, FM, uh, CW, all that. And it also has free DV built in, which is really swell. The DSP has all of your standard functions, noise reduction, notch, combinations of the above. We'll be trying those a little bit later. Your PA is your power level output going from full to 5 watts, 2 watts, 1 watt, and a half a watt. And your bandwidth on the receive side here is nice because you can um, sort of hit it and increment through the different bandwidths, which you can put in here as you like from a larger list when using the menu. So you can have either bandpass filters or a low pass filter preserving the low frequency response and then tapering off at the high end. Um, the buttons under the screen here are for different functions which are shown on the screen, but the screen is also a touch screen. I'm going to use this little stylus over here. Over here we're talking tuning step on the right. It goes all the way from 1 hertz all the way up as high as you'd like. And of course the tuning knob, band selection up and down over here. And um, when you read up on this radio there's a lot of sort of dual functions of the way that it actually works. Uh, by holding the buttons in or whatever. So and power power switches on the top left. I will mention do not uh, turn the try to turn the power on on the radio with the USB connected to a computer. It doesn't seem to want to turn on on the version 4 board with um, running 2.4.0 uh, software firmware here in late August of 2017. This is a marvelous little SDR with a few little hitches in its in its design. It's extremely simple and what it does, it does very well. So let's take a look at the um, screen it, itself and all of the features and functions on the screen. Let's start from the top left over here. TXEO, that's right, it's got a crystal oven in it. And there's no reason not to use it because I have seen uh, that the current draw on this thing is negligible. It's very, very low. There's no, no reason not to calibrate the radio when it warms up and use the uh, temperature control crystal oven on this, showing the temperature right there. Audio frequency gain, use the uh, encoder knob, you know, on the first knob and it turns it up and down. But if I press the knob in, it goes to the transmit uh, compressor and I can turn that up and down. Hit it again. And when I key the radio, it'll automatically switch down to compressor. It's a really smart little radio. Uh, AGC over here is basically RF gain. You know, these days they're calling it AGC on the SDRs. If I push it in, you get the um, AGC speed, and I've got several selections over here from very long, long, slow, medium, fast, and off, and these are adjustable, and I can hit it again. It'll go down to the uh, DSP over here and cycles through a bunch of stuff, including bass and treble controls on the received audio coming in. How cool is that, huh? Uh, next is RIT, and it's always on. You just set it at zero over here and use the third encoder to do it. But if I hit it, then I've got my mic level. So we have dual functions on that. The meter is a traditional S meter on the top over here, but goes to power output when you key up. But if you press the meter button down here, it cycles through your audio level, which you adjust your transmit audio with, uh, your SWR uh, bridge, so you can see your SWR, and your ALC here, so you can kick on that compressor and pop up the ALC to the, to the nice sweet range there and have your, your SSB signal optimized. So you can leave it on any of those, normally leave it on ALC. This little number right here, I've never seen referred to in the, in the manuals anywhere, and it seems to be processor loading. The microprocessor in this is up to the job, but I would say barely up to the job. And there are certain circumstances where you have combinations of DSP on with, uh, I forget, notch and noise reduction or whatever that could slow down the display. And they, they mention that, uh, he mentions that in the manual. But this is, again, a group effort and open source hardware and firmware. This is processor loading. So right now, in a normal operation, it's using about 40% of its capacity. I'm on full power. The incoming signal it shows in DBM. How about that? 
uh, our Corsair mode and our tuning step over here. What band we're on. When we're out of the band, it'll just say uh, meters. Uh, and then uh, the exact frequency that you're on, you can sort of use this as a calibration point to make sure that you're on. And you can read that in the manual. Uh, AGC, when it's kicking on, and when you see it kicking in, sometimes you get a very, very strong signal. It'll blink red up here, showing that it's just coming in over, almost overloading the A to D converter. And uh, you'll be able to tell adjusting your AGC where that sweet spot is by this blinking on and off. You do want it to have a little bit of action. There's our 20 meters there. Uh, frequency step is shown under the frequency here. Our DSP over here, I'm going to hit the DSP uh, button and it'll cycle through DSP on, uh, DSP automatic notch, uh, noise reduction plus notch, uh, and manual notch, and then a peaking filter for CW and DSP off. If you're in any, in any of these modes, like I just have the noise reduction on, and hold the DSP button in, it kicks it right back off. So you can cycle through them or you can turn it on and off. Our uh, Bandpass uh, filter here for a reception of CW or whatever mode you're in and uh, like I said you can select from a whole bevy of those and put them into your uh, preset locations here so you can cycle through the ones you really like. Uh, digital over here that means uh, you're going to see this for uh, digital modes and such. I'm actually not sure why it says digital when we're on USB but truthfully uh, I'm using USB mode for digital, so that may be what it is showing that in USB we're, we're capable of doing our digital mode. Under that is the battery voltage, and that is calibratable too, so I've got it. Uh, this is running off of a solar battery bank, so now the sun is coming up and you see the voltage is, is coming up. I think it's pretty happy to about 15, and on a solar charge you'll never go over that. Here's your buttons down here, uh, which correspond to the soft buttons on the front. and you can um, just press the button and get into any of these. What I do is put the VFOA, say, down in the CW section, VFOB up in the SSB section. It's got a nice tune button with a settable power level, or you can just have it track the power level that you're at if you want to have the tune have the same power level or a reduced power level. It has split function for offset, you know, split, split operation. Want to get fancy there. And there's our meter selection. So uh, some of the stuff just switches when you go into transmitter, your different modes, and you'll see different things. Like if I go into... Um, free DV mode, uh, you'll see that it has a bit error rate and signal to noise ratio comes over here. Man, that is super slick. Here's a mode indication there. And also, what I want to say is that this spectral display uh, is a super spoiler. The refresh rate is as fast as any of the best SDRs that you can buy in the market. I'm, I'm thinking we're up at uh, 26 to 30 frames a second on this. That's what it feels like. Plus it allows you to put in averaging, which I have, and this looks as good as, I'm going to just say it, as good as a flex display or others. Although um, I personally haven't seen a way to do the waterfall and the uh, standard display at the same time. It's customizable completely in the menu system with colors of the grid of the of the data itself uh, whether it's filled in or not and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, menu button and now we see we can go up and down on the menus, previous, next, this kind of thing. But also you can use the first uh, the second two rotating buttons to rotate through them and when you want to expand that menu you just turn the third button and not the second and it expands it and you can go up and down and change the value turn it back off go to a different menu turn the third button and it opens it up or you can use these buttons down here uh, it's very very nicely done and there is a ton of customizability in here so say in the display menu you have a lot of different stuff you can get bigger smaller the all kind of stuff all the different colors and then you can just close it back up you can go over to waterfall back it out and we'll be in waterfall mode here uh, all of this is completely customizable. So if you're maybe in operating digital modes, you might want to have the waterfall on. Uh, refresh rate is certainly adequate, and it's also uh, completely uh, color changeable and all that kind of stuff. So this is the way I like it. Underneath, you'll see, because of the way that the uh, scope is set up, or the waterfall is set up, the frequency range that it's covering. And let me go back. Uh, oh, actually, you can see it over here, right under 14208, that the bandpass filter width is also shown with a line under here. I won't zoom into it, but you can just see a little white line over there. So that is pretty cool. I'm going to go back and put it back on scope. And we're back on the scope, which I prefer because I'm in, in sideband mode a lot of the time. Now, let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, some different modes operating on this radio. I have it hooked up to a PIPO microcomputer. It's a little wedge-shaped 
uh, com about a hundred dollar computer and what's really nice is this has an uh, USB connector and all the drivers and stuff set up to automatically work with your audio coming in and out and keying with ham lib you can key it up including just straight RTS or DTS lines one of those I think works now in current current firmware and key the radio up I couldn't believe how easy it was uh, the thing just worked right off on a Windows 10 little wedgie computer here that didn't have much power and uh, we'll, we'll show you a demo of the modes now just so you can hear the quality of the receiver is excellent um, these from what I've heard maybe actually audio bandpass filters uh, but I've had incredibly strong signals right next to ones that were lesser and I didn't hear hardly anything bleeding through so performance is absolutely adequate so let's just t take a listen on some of the uh, operating modes when you had the new call sign, I uh, I recognized you, and so uh, so very good. Uh, Let's turn on the DSP. What, what was the name of the uh, noise radio? reduction? I just got a, a mind bubble. Well, uh, I was. Uh, that operates about as good as my TS nine ninety noise reduction. A lot of that uh, little background noise you hear is in my local area here, it's sort of a swishing sound, uh, headed out uh, remotely on the beach this weekend and it was very, very quiet. So CW is nice and also CW transmit is clean. Peaking filter. Nice, huh? And for digital modes, I'm using the USB connector directly to a PIPO mini computer. It's this little wedge-shaped thing over here. It's hard to see the hard to see the form factor of it, but it's you know $130 device or so, depending on which version you get. And I've got uh, JTDX going there. And it's copying just fine. Uh, adjust your levels and you're ready to rock. It was king of the radio and everything else. So you can use your FL Digi or any of the other programs to interact with the MCHF. And for the free DV mode, uh, you can go on qso.freedv.org and coordinate a QSO or see who's on what frequency at any given time. Right now there's no activity on 14236, the agreed upon free DB uh, frequency, but I'm looking forward to making a QSO on that frequency and certainly with uh, the lighter uh, power output I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to get a full lockup with a lot of stations and have, have nice uh, digital voice QSOs. So there we go, showing you the video error rate and signal to noise ratio once you uh, have an incoming signal. And I wish I could let you hear the audio on that, but there's just nobody on frequency at the moment. Now. I've got an external speaker hooked up, which I like a lot, just a Bluetooth speaker that has a uh, little mini jack so you can plug it right into the phone's output here. <laughs> but I'm going to show you something that I find very neat about the MCHF. I'm not sure if they all do this. Uh, I bet you they do. When you have an external speaker plugged in and you turn off the radio, you get this really cool sound. So here's the right side of the radio. Your phone's jack, nice metallic one there, metal one. The microphone, pretty obvious. Uh, accessory connector, which can be configured in the menuing for uh, several different options. You could key an amplifier with it, or there are several different options for that. You get your key input for your CW key for straight or iambic pedals, and you've got some selections in the menus under the CW menu. Line level in and out, how nice is that? And then you have your quite wide range uh, DC input connector standard type. On the left side of the rig, we've got a couple of USB connectors and the antenna connector. And the DFU connector uh, is where you're going to be connecting up to hook up for digital operations. And the other style, I guess these are A and B type of USB connectors, 
uh, can be used for other functions. You'll be updating the firmware in the radio and things like that. Uh, there is a bootloader, which is a separate program from the actual firmware, and that bootloader as well can be updated. Standard BNC connector, and these are the thumb wheel uh, connect, uh, screws for both sides. It has on both sides, and these are to let the back flap out that holds the rig up at a nice angle, which is rather nice. The top has a little metal plate screwed on over here, and that sort of can be an additional heatsink because both the two screws on the left and the two screws on the right are going to transistors. Uh, uh, two are regulators and two are the output transistors, and you will notice quite a bit of heat. Now you could cut a piece of heatsink material, attach it over here for increased dissipation on your finals. That wouldn't be bad if you're running digital modes and you're going to run it up at 8 or 10 watts, and I'm probably going to do that myself. So, there you have it. The MCHF by M0MKA comes in kit form with all of the boards populated with the SMD devices or just the bare bones boards. And you can buy your own parts from one of the local parts supply houses. A fabulous radio in the uh, 350 price class in USD. And I think certainly worth looking into. And so until next time, take care.